Condemnation is something that will hold you in your in, in, in one in one place of your life. See, th this is the thing that you have to understand that there's no sin that's greater than the other. But the devil would have you think that your sin that you committed, oh my God, it's the worst one in the world. That nobody has ever done that. Are you kidding me? Man, you're the scum of the earth. But let me tell you something, that God's mercy is so great because did you know that the Bible was mostly written by murderers? The Bible was mostly written by murderers. What do you mean by that, Tori, and all the theologians? What do you mean by that? Moses was a murderer. He wrote all of the law. David was a murderer. He, he murdered his, his boy. To sleep with his girl, I mean, he slept with his girl, I mean, his boy's girl. I'm going to go like straight hood on y'all, right? Straight. He didn't slept with his girl's, you know, I mean, his boy's boo, you know what I'm saying? He got her pregnant and all that. He knocked her up and all that stuff. And then he say, hey, player, you know what I'm saying? When you come back home, I want you to go ahead and get with your honey dip and all that different stuff just to kind of cover it up. And then he said, you know, player, listen, I am so committed to you, player. I ain't going to do that, player, because I know got to get my strength, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, David said, man, man, this dude is so, is so, so cool, man. He's good, but that's what I know I got to get him in his faithfulness. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to put him on the front lines and then I'm going to tell my boys to retreat on the boy so that they can blast them. <laughs> That's the NHT, the New Hood translation. <laughs> oh my God. But David was faced with all different, he took a census when God told him not to take a census. He fell so many times. But David shows us that we can continue to go back to God. And so David, he, he, he murdered his boy and murdered his boy, but he wrote all of Psalms. Paul was a murderer. He wrote most of the epistles. So what does that tell me about God's grace? That there's nothing too big, bad, ugly, disgusting, ridiculous, nasty that you would ever do. That God would write you off. That his blood is not powerful enough. That his grace is not great enough. That his love is not powerful enough to break over your life. But see, what happens is that we don't believe that because we're not confident in God. So whatever we're not confident in, we will not be consistent in. You know how they train baby elephants? They literally tie a rope around their leg while they're babies so that later on in life, they can do exactly what the, the trainer wants them to do. And so all through life, month after month, well, week after week, month after month, year after year, they have this chain around their leg, and as they're growing, the chain gets a little bit lighter. But it's called to train that elephant never to go outside of the confined space in which the owner wants him to stay. So why am I telling you this? It's because it's the same thing that the devil does to us, that he ties ropes of condemnation around our legs. And when we're ready to go to the next level, when we're ready to do things for God, when we're ready to start the business, when we're ready to write the book, when we're ready to do whatever we're called to do, we have this condemnation that holds us back. And it takes us and it makes us look back to the place where we were supposed to be forgiven, but we've been carrying it all of our lives. So you try to get away from it. You think you got your stride. You're doing some great things here. You got your stride going on. And then you get over here and you're ready to go into that marriage. And you're ready to do things right. And you're ready to do all that stuff. But oh, wait a minute. Oh, you slept with such and such so many times. How many times over and over again takes you back to that place. And condemnation will keep you in the place where God wants to deliver you. Condemnation will keep you settled. And no, most, most Christians are right here in this place. I can't get over the things that I did in my childhood. I can't get over the last, the, the last divorce. I can't get over the failings that I hope that I, that I do every day over and over and over again. Condemnation has you caged. And so that's the devil's plan. But listen, you say, man, I haven't been able to do this. I haven't been able to get where I want to get. And so... You know, I guess that God is just done with me. And so, you know, I guess he's done. So, you know, I can't do anything right. I keep on looking at pornography. I keep on, you know, sleeping with these girls. I keep on messing around with these guys. And, you know, I just really can't get, get out of it. And so I go into my own baggage and I begin to chain myself. I'm beginning to say, man, I can't do that. I can't start that business, man. 
that last business failed, nobody called me back, I don't have the skills, uh, and you begin to chain yourself, and now you're walking around with self-condemnation. And you can't get free, and now you look weird to everybody, because you really want to do some things right. You really want to serve God. You really want to come in this place and give your heart to God. But yet the condemnation that the devil has put around your leg and the self-condemnation that you have felt so many times in your years of your life, you can't get free. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Because Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore for now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Not those who are in sin, not to those who are in the flesh, but those who are in Christ Jesus. So when you become in Christ Jesus, God begins to take every chain off your life. He begins to take you off all of these things that you have that have wrapped around you. He takes your baggage away and he throws it away and he looses you and gives you the freedom because in the presence of the Lord, there is freedom, there is liberty. The captives are set free. Your mind goes to the next level because God is with you. I have confidence in my God. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too strong for him. He is my peace. He is my love. He has forgiven me. He's washed me over and 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 over again. There is no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. 1 John chapter 3, verse 19 says, If our hearts do not condemn us, we can have confidence towards God. Yes. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let them then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Without confidence, you can't approach the throne of God. With condemnation on your life, you cannot approach the throne of God. And therefore, you cannot get the grace and the mercy that God wants to so freely give you. James chapter 1, verse 6. We should ask in faith or confidence, nothing wavering. Verse 7 says, let that, let, if we're double-minded in our ways, let that man not think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. If we don't have this confidence and we let condemnation keep us, we will not be confident in what God is calling us to do. So everything about this Christian walk and about faith is about building and maintaining confidence in our God. And this is what David is writing in these scriptures. Listen, I messed up. I royally messed up. But God, don't hide your face from me. God, I'm going to be consistent.